Hi, and welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. I'm Lisa Pavelka, and today I'd like to show you how you can create your own steampunk gears and embellishments from clay. More specifically, today we're going to be working with metal clay to create fine silver components. So we start with a package of metal clay and you don't want to open it until you're really ready to work and you have all the tools and supplies you need at hand. So refer to the list that accompanies this tutorial so you know what you need. You also want a piece of plastic to get started with because when we work with it and condition it out of the package, the more you keep it out of the air, the longer working time you'll have. So right here, I have already got a piece ready to go. And out of the package, I suggest kneading it just a little bit, opening up the plastic, and try not to handle it as much as possible. And kneading it again, do this two or three times. Once you're sure it's conditioned and there's no pockets of air, you're going to go ahead and knead my steampunk texture plates. Now you see here in the set, there's an innie and an outie, a negative and a positive. For most of the components, I use the innie stamp, and that's what I'll be demonstrating with. But there are a few components, like the keyhole, that in order to get a solid keyhole with just the keyhole opening, you'll want to use the outie one. But we'll just set that aside for now. Okay, the stamp should be clean. If you've used it for inks or other, other materials like polymer clay, make sure you clean it in between use when you're working with different materials. You might want to put a little olive oil on your hands beforehand so the clay doesn't stick. I've already done that. And I'm going to take a small ball and then wrap up the excess clay. Setting it aside, I'm going to put it right under my stamp here so that plastic can't open and keep the air off of it so it stays malleable and workable. So I'm going to take a small piece and choose a cavity in my stamp, pressing it in firmly with my finger and very carefully with a sharp blade I'll shave it off the surface of the rubber. If you see any of the clay sticking to the top of the rubber, pass over it once or twice again with your blade to shave it off. Now, I find that I get the best results and fewer problems with my components breaking if I just only do three or four components at a time before I dehydrate them. Now this one's ready to set aside to dehydrate, but I've already prepared one that's ready to go. And when we want to release the pieces from the stamp, you want to do it very gradually. In the case of this watch part, I'm gently going to bend in a way that will allow the tips and the ends of it to lift up. So maybe you can see a little bit better like that. And with your fine tip tweezers, very carefully pull up. Don't squeeze the piece because it's about as strong as a potato chip. And that came out nicely. You can see this one already started to release. So when you're doing a round component, just gently rotate and continue doing it gradually with a little bit more pressure and bend so that until you see the piece come up. Now, let's see if we get those little spiky bits coming out of it. I try to get those, but oftentimes it's hard to get those fine little details. That one's stuck. I got a few of those. So I'd probably cut them away because that opening just became a wonderful opportunity for embellishment. And I don't worry about the pieces breaking, and here's why. Oftentimes, I make a lot of these, and I have complete pieces that I end up breaking anyway. Because depending on the type of designs you're going to do, you may want a point or half of a gear coming in from the edge of your design or in a corner. So I fire all the little bits, no matter what they are, and I find I have a use for each and every one of them. So let's go ahead and fire these. We want to make sure anything flammable is out of our way. And we're working on a heat proof fire brick designed for soldering or flame torching. It's also a good idea to have some metal sheeting or a large ceramic tile between your work surface and your brick, just as an extra safety precaution. Then we're going to take a fueled butane lighter and this requires a couple of different fingers to make sure you've got it all on, so we'll go through that in a second. Make sure if you have any loose hair clothing, it's well pulled back, or be very mindful, as I'm going to do, that you're standing back behind the torch flame and away from it. Okay, we're ready to darken the studio here so we can see what's going on. 
This particular torch, I have to pull down the safety valve. I'm going to pull back this switch and ignite. And this switch locks it in a place. So I'm going to speak a little bit loudly so you can hear over the flame. And you're going to hit this, and you're going to see a little smoke, and then fire. It's very important to work in a well-ventilated room. And you begin timing your firing the minute you see anywhere from a light pink to a deep salmon color. The darker your room, the brighter the piece will appear. A lighter room, you're going to find that it's going to be a lighter pink. But if you go in too close with your flame, you're going to perhaps burn or blister. What you're watching to avoid is dark shiny spots, if it looks like silver while you're firing it, or if it gets cherry red. Oftentimes you're rotating your torch or just moving it back and forth gently, and you have to make minute adjustments, bringing the torch in and out till you get the perfect color. But keep rotating that torch to keep the color the way you want it. We're going to torch for about three minutes. Now that we're done torch firing, we're going to bring the lights back up. Be sure to set your torch aside somewhere where you won't accidentally come in contact with it as the tip remains very hot for quite some time. Also, the surface of your fire brick will remain cool underneath, but it's very hot on top. So you'll want to take a pair of tweezers and you need a bowl of water, it should be glass or ceramic, not plastic. And you'll drop your pieces into the water, and sometimes you hear a little hiss or even a, a, a slight pop sound, and you don't need to listen for that because by the time your pieces hit the bottom of the bowl, they're already completely cool. And you don't have to worry about handling them. I'm going to fish them out with my tweezers. And we're going to remove our fire brick. And again, remember the surface of that brick is still very warm. So be sure to pick it up from the sides and not get your hand in contact with the top. I'm just going to blot these dry. And then we're just going to do a little hand finishing. You can also put them in a tumbler with mixed steel shot. Or you can leave them a little bit more rustic. But the reason that the pieces appear white and actually here, a couple of them already look silver. That's because I became very close during firing to burning them or melting them. And I didn't. I pulled back the torch just in the nick of time. But when the pieces come out, they'll generally look white like they do here. Let's look at it from that angle. And we'll come back and get those pieces again. And the reason for that is the silver molecules are standing straight up at attention. So we're going to burnish them down. First, we're going to do it with a very stiff wire brush. And you want to have a tool in there when you work. Don't put your finger down when you're working with this type of a brush, because you can definitely, definitely hurt yourself. The bristles are very sharp. Now, it might be hard to see at this point, but when you do the wire brushing, it will start making it look more silver. That's because you're flattening those silver molecules. And it's going to have a brushed metal look. And actually, I am going to take those little pieces off there so we can concentrate on this one gear right here. OK? Now, I'm taking an agate burnisher. And a lot of people, the first time they work with this, are a little hesitant to press hard because they're afraid they're going to break the agate stone at the end. Don't worry about it. This is very strong. Now I can put my finger in here, and I'm taking the flat edge of the burnisher and pressing very, very hard. And you can get into detailed areas with your tip if you like. I tend to leave my gears a little bit more rustic. Again, putting multiple gears inside of a tumbler with mixed steel shot will take care of this. You'll do it for about an hour or so. You might not want to even give them a shine. You might want them to look more antique. But let's take a look at how shiny that is right there. So that is compressing the molecules on the surface and reducing the porosity of the silver, and that's what gives us the shine. So let's talk about how we might use our finished components. Now here, in a piece like this, where the steampunk components are featured elements in the design, I didn't fire them before adding them to a metal clay background. I used my love letter stamp and a heart cutter to create the shape. 
I made the bale over a drinking straw. And then I attached the steam pump components when they were in the greenware state or the unfired state using a little bit of metal clay slip or, or paste. And then I dehydrated the whole piece again. Then I can torch fire it. If you have a kiln, that's also another way to fire it. So that's one way to work with it. Here, in this bezel setting, I've embedded them over a stamped background of polymer clay and I've poured magic gloss on the top. About an hour after the magic gloss cured, I was able to drill through the center and add one of my little pointer hands to make it a spinner ring. How fun is that? And don't just stop with making metal clay components. You can even use polymer clays to make gears of all different colors. If you want pink gears, you can have pink gears. And it's really that easy to make your own steampunk components. So thank you so much for joining me today at the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studio. For more tips, how-tos, and projects, please visit us at firemountaingems.com.